that's been going on. In Vienna, the United Nations nuclear watchdog says four yeah, nuclear power watching. plants closest to the Japanese earthquake have been safely shut down, confirming what the Japanese government spokesman was saying. In the Pacific, Guam, the island of Guam, the scene of uh, famous battles in World War II, is on a tsunami alert where the beaches have been cleared, according to an official there. The Associated Press telling us that uh, from Alaska, Anchorage in Alaska, that tsunami warnings have been issued for parts of California, for Oregon and for Alaska, uh, though it's not thought necessarily that the uh, seaboard of, uh, of America there, the western uh, seaboard is likely to be affected. Other places are much closer and more directly in the line of fire. Dr. David Whitehouse is alongside me looking at these pictures uh, which came in during daylight hours. It's now dark uh, in Japan uh, as elsewhere in other parts of the Pacific. At the scale of this thing we've been discussing, it's, uh, it's record-breaking in the grimmest of ways. It is. This is the largest earthquake ever in recorded history to strike Japan. Uh, struck off the coast and therefore its effect is going to be more widespread than if it struck the land area of Japan. Uh, it's absolutely devastating. Of course we had a couple of years ago the uh, Indian Ocean earthquake which is number three uh, but really you have to go back to the early 60s when the two largest earthquakes recorded were uh, occurred in, in Alaska and in Chile. So this is historic. The description by the U.S. Geological Survey as this as a mega earthquake, and it was obvious from the very beginning the strength of the signals that were received all around the world suggests that this is a major event. And uh, at this moment, I expect satellites will be being tasked to, uh, to look at the region uh, where it occurred off the coast of Canada, not only to uh, assess the damage to uh, the land area of Japan, but uh, also to, uh, to look at the, the sea and see if there's any evidence from, uh, from radar, from other evidence of what's below, uh, below on the ground, the ocean floor, to see if there's any evidence of changes there. Because this is a, a catastrophe for uh, humanity, but also it's a scientific um, opportunity to study what happens when well, great forces are released. Let, let, let me just press you on that point, because we know that a lot of brain power has been expended in predicting tsunamis. Do we have any chance of predicting earthquakes like this one? Not really. Um, people have, there have been many, many studies tried to predict earthquakes, and they've all been unsatisfactory. Nobody's come up with the technique to do so. You can, if you like, judging by the length of time since a last dramatic earthquake in an earthquake zone, make predictions as to how likely the next one will be. California is a case in point because the San Andreas Fault will produce a major earthquake sometime in the future. And pressure and tension is built up on this force will be released during an earthquake. But actually pinning that down into saying that it's more likely this year than next year has proved to be scientifically impossible. So well, we know there are regions that are prone to large earthquakes and the longest since the previous large earthquake, the more tension and, te and, and tectonic force built up that will eventually be released, but nobody can predict when that stuff will be released.